And I need to turn on my microphone before we get started here. Hello everyone, and welcome to the After Hours Gaming League. I am your caster for the match, Crick Chronic War Catalyst here. And we will be getting into the match momentarily as we see here as the pick bands go down. Um, but first I want to introduce our two lovely teams here on the blue side. It will be Facebook Team Facebook. Facebook, Facebook of course, uh, the iconic social media site. And they are playing against the team uh, from the company that has won the internet itself, Google Ward Search. Another beautiful play on words that you know I just love to see um, from the Google teams uh, using that word search. Uh, uh, pun whenever they can. Fantastic. It makes me all wiggly. Uh, <laughs> so uh, they're going to both be playing for the charity Doctors Without Borders. Doctors Without Borders, uh, what they do is they send doctors to the war-torn regions of the world and uh, developing countries that are facing diseases that they don't have the infrastructure built in to deal with. Uh, and they do the work that other doctors, quite frankly, aren't willing to do because it's too risky. Um, so, I mean, fantastic charity there. I'm glad to see both of these teams are playing for that charity. But without any further ado, let's dive right into the pick band phase here. As we see, um, the bands for the blue side are going to be uh, Nasus, Morgana, and Diana. Diana uh, is something we have seen come out uh, in previous games. So that is obviously a targeted band. The Nasus, uh, of course, Susan is a favorite um, of, let me see if I actually have my notes here, of uh, this fine young man here, Targan, I'm going to say is the name. Um, uh, favorite pick, uh, so definitely targeting that out, especially given that that champion can become such a insane nightmare. If somebody uh, has that as a comfort pick, they're going to be able to deal with it during the weak early game phase because they will be used to that sort of play uh, and learning how to deal with the counterplay involved with dealing with Anasis in the early game. So uh, we're going to see um, that band out for the blue side. And for the red side here, we see the bands are uh, Nar, Wukong, and Vi. Vi uh, is a targeted band along with Nar as well, um, though those are certainly both uh, just perfectly fine bands on their own. Nar has fallen a bit out of favor in recent patches. Um, because that rage bar is a little bit more difficult to manage, but overall still a very strong champion So definitely not uh, a band you would want to skimp on especially if that is a favorite champion um, For the other team with comfort pick Vi, of course still very strong the um, as we can see already with these picks Sejuani being first picked away for the blue side here um, this is uh, very uh, representative of the entire patch. I, I love the synced uh, together lock-in. That feels good. It keeps the other team on the edge. Um, <laughs> always good to see that. Um, but Sejuani, of course, being first picked here is very uh, representative of this patch that has uh, a lot of strong benefits and buffs towards the tanky junglers. So seeing the Vi ban and the Wukong ban uh, are very uh, respectful bans uh, to these junglers that, um, while certainly still strong, I mean, of course, Vi, insanely strong for her ability to engage whether or not you want her to. Um, so, definitely a lot of respect from this red side, uh, taking away some of those uh, comfort champions, even though uh, they are not necessarily ones that are the most favored on this patch, they are still certainly strong um, and could easily be brought um, back into the fold outside of uh, as outside of the meta picks here um, and then we're seeing here locked in uh, for this blue side or excuse me for this red side is going to be the Cassiopeia um, definitely one of the uh, favorite picks here for this uh, red side right after uh, Nasus um, if they are going to uh, send Targan up into the top lane Targan has been known to do a little flexibility in between the top and mid lane though he is certainly familiar with Cassiopeia in the mid lane as well and I would venture I guess that seeing that Scion locked in that's going to be where this Cassiopeia is headed right now. Uh, it looks like uh, we're going to see <clears throat> excuse me we're going to see uh, that Leona Graves in the bot lane and that is an insanely strong bot lane especially once they hit level 2 the amount of burst engage they will be able to throw out onto uh, a, a squishy Lucian is going to be 
nearly unmatched. Um, so Lucian's going to have to have uh, bullet time reaction time with those dashes away from them um, once he gets that ability leveled on up. So we'll keep an eye on the bot lane and uh, particularly see if there's going to be uh, a lane swap coming out into this. And of course we do see uh, the final pick for this blue side is going to be that Orianna uh, in the mid lane, which is going to be fantastic given that Akali and Sejuani are both going to want to dive in uh, especially, uh, e even regardless of Sejuani, aside from just being able to land her ult for a little bit of CC, uh, even if she doesn't hit it spot on, uh, Akali is going to be able to jump right into the middle of the enemy team. So bringing the ball with her is one of the most efficient ball delivery systems. I can only think of Vi as a possibly more efficient one. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. So uh, hopefully we're going to see some very uh, fantastic play here coming out from this Akali uh, Oriana synergy and it looks like we might see our second Katarina game yes we do locked in uh, officially is that Katarina so our second Katarina game of the day um, and that will be Katarina actually going into what I believe uh, would be the middle lane and that Cassiopeia ending up in the top lane uh, instead here and it looks like we are going to remake this uh, really quickly because uh, we are having some technical difficulties here. Um, so we will go ahead and throw this back to the uh, beautiful logo screen momentarily as I speak a bit more about those picks. Um, uh, specifically for that Cassiopeia, again, that is going to be a Cassiopeia who ends up in the top lane. That is not a foreign choice uh, as far as uh, we are concerned with seeing from this red side. That is something that uh, it's very comfortable and very regularly whipped out in practice here. Uh, along with another unusual pick for the top lane, Annie, uh, is certainly in that rotation as well. So a bit, aside from the uh, Susan, of course, uh, a bit unusual um, a rotation of uh, uh, champions that are coming out in the top lane uh, for this red side. But... Um, <laughs> So pardon me, I'm watching uh, the in-game chat here, just keeping an eye on it, see when we're uh, going to hop back into the game here. Uh, but overall, um, having that Cassiopeia in the top lane, especially with how the flavor of having uh, typically more fragile AP uh, top laners nowadays uh, is coming into flavor here, having Cassiopeia in the top lane is going to work out great because um, she's going to be able to play a bit more uh, reserved in that top lane. Of course, she will be a little bit more vulnerable given that, but of course, is a longer lane and a little bit more uh, area to gank through. But if she does play uh, cautiously, if she does uh, just keep back, farm from a distance, use uh, uh, her poison to get those stacks going up, uh, not focus too heavily on trying to fight and harass the Akali down, but uh, mostly just farm that up she's going to be able to get her stacks uh, very efficiently in that top lane uh, as long as she continues uh, well <laughs> continues we're not even in game but if she places down the wards properly and keeps herself covered at all times she should be able to uh, hit that spike and even go uh, for uh, a greedier build on Cassiopeia perhaps a tier catalyst start something like that um, we've seen of course tier is something that's almost just a, a insta buy uh, for any Cassiopeia, um, but you know me, me myself personally, I like to go with the full greed rod of ages and tier uh, whenever possible. So we'll see if that's a power trough um, that is comfortable for this red side. Uh, we of course certainly have seen um, uh, a lot of play in the top lane with this Cassiopeia. So this is going to be something that. Uh, we're going to expect to be uh, showing a comfort level of play here. So that might in the same breath mean that we're going to see uh, a bit more. Actually, here, let me swap these screens back on over so we can uh, see these picks come back. Um, so, of course, uh, there that Cassiopeia is going to be something that they are very comfortable on and go are going to be able to... Uh, place safely on so they might if depending on their play style if they have typically gone uh, for a uh, a greedier build 
on the Cassiopeia, um, then that is only going to benefit them in that top lane as they uh, get those games in on that Cassiopeia um, and are able to replicate that comfort level with a greedier build now. But uh, again, that is an immense power trough if you do decide to go for Rod of Ages and Tier. Uh, it takes quite a long time for both of those to stack up, and we're actually going to see the Lissandra locked in uh, here for the blue side. I do know that there were uh, contingency picks here, um, or proxy picks, from both of these teams that were being communicated uh, directly between each other just in case um, somebody didn't have a champion to actually perform on. Um, so it looks like that was one of the proxy picks here that is actually going to get rotated and is going to be uh, Alessandra for the blue side here, as opposed to uh, the Akali which we saw before. Um, so that is going to be uh, not, I, I wouldn't say, uh, a, a lesser ball delivery system in that Lissandra. Of course, being able to take the claw in and immediately stasis herself um, through whatever she needs to initially deal with. Um, or stasis a particular target that she doesn't want to flash away from the Oriana ultimate is going to be very strong. But the sudden jump uh, of that claw is a lot more... Uh, detached than Akali's jump so whether or not Oriana will be able to position herself properly to stay out of range of suffering any CC or critical damage from the red side uh, yet at the same time remaining in range to stick with that Lissandra and be able to instantly get that ultimate off right as Lissandra goes in uh, we're gonna have to keep an eye on that Oriana position to see just how she plays that here um, of course with uh, the Leona and with the Katarina and Graves, the amount of burst power that uh, can come out onto a target that slightly mispositions and goes a little bit more forward than they should have is going to be something that is uh, very unforgiving from this red side. So Oriana's positioning is going to be absolutely critical and that might exactly be why uh, we see this uh, barrier being taken here. Um, typically when you are uh, going in the middle lane against uh, someone like a Katarina who's all about that burst. Um, it's more, a little bit more common to see uh, a exhaust in the mid lane. Uh, but we're, we've been seeing more so and more so the barriers come out here. Um, from uh, these mid laners in the previous games today. Um, I, I'm not aware of any changes to the barrier, so it might just be a coincidence of personal preference here. But certainly barrier is not uh, a poor choice at all, and uh, particularly in the last game that was of such note, because their uh, support did not opt to take barrier, whereas this Janna has taken it, uh, excuse me, has not, did not take uh, opt to take exhaust, they took ignite. Whereas this Janna did in fact take exhaust, so there will still be an exhaust somewhere on this blue team uh, to try and deal with a Cassiopeia who starts becoming a nightmare, twin fanging everyone, uh, or a Katarina that gets a really good positional uh, jump in and then can really start dishing out some AoE damage with her ultimate. That is going to be a very critical summoner spell to keep an eye on here. Uh, so as we're watching the game unfold, do keep an eye on that uh, exhaust uh, cooldown to make sure uh, you know whether or not Katarina and Cassiopeia are going to be something that is a nightmare for the blue side <laughs> um overall also this is one of our first games uh today of seeing not necessarily a scion but seeing a scion in the jungle i know uh once scion was initially reworked there was a lot of talk uh, about putting scion in the jungle and seeing how they could work that out this is uh, a bit unusual uh, given how things have shaken out with that champion since the rework he's become more of a just outright tank top laner but seeing him uh, in the jungle might make me feel uh, like there's a little bit of tricks up their sleeves for this red side here. Of course, Scion going to be able to uh, just ult right down the middle of a lane or ult right through river and give you far less time to react to an incoming gank. Even if he does not actually land that ultimate on his target, giving that additional damage, that additional CC effect of the knockup or not displacement, I should say. Um... It's not going to be something that's as critical as the mobility, the hyper mobility that Scion uh, gets from running that ultimate out um, and being able to be anywhere on the map within seconds. 
So those ganks are going to be ever more present, uh, ever more deadly as well. Uh, and it, I will be interested to see, in particular, what uh, jungle item uh, Sion decides to upgrade his uh, machete into. If it's going to be a more farm-oriented Sion to try and get himself to that tank. Um, again, as this is a patch that does benefit tanks fairly largely, seeing Sion go with that Juggernaut enchantment is going to uh, make him even more tankier than the Sions we typically see in the top lane. So, uh, absolute monster of a tank is going to be this Scion here. And we're going to have to keep a very close eye on exactly how he performs and uh, what he chooses to build after those first items. And uh, again, what kind of uh, smite uh, he wants to take with that. If he's going to try and farm that up uh, to get to that insane tankiness and make use of that as we see some pings coming out for an invade here. Um, if he's going to try and make that uh, transition into the... Uh, hyper tank <laughs> that he can be uh, early or if he's going to opt to uh, go with something that is a bit more gank focused with a uh, chilling smite or something of the like as well so we'll we'll keep our eyes on that but it looks like unfortunately for this red side there was an early ward throw thrown down I should say um, from this blue side here a trinket ward immediately and it looks like they're not going to realize this, and they're going to go ahead and just sit on this. They, the blue side will know all five members are here right now hatching this ward. So uh, as the pings come out and they go for a little rotation again, uh, some more vision being thrown down, but they're going to back away, just sort of seed this general area, um, have this ward give them enough vision uh, to know if they're coming for any further uh, presence here. But in the meantime, uh, there was a ward thrown down for this blue side here, deep in the red side jungle, so they will know if there's going to be any starts on the red side here. Uh, and just where exactly that Scion is looking to go. I would not be surprised if that is a Krug start for Scion. Uh, but yes, in fact, they will be revealed as Cassiopeia checking a little bit. They will see that Cassiopeia and Scion heading on up to these Krugs. Whereas uh, they will see in the last moment that this bottom lane is in fact doing a standard start here. Um, fairly confident in their ability to deal with that really heavy, strong engage at the start of the Graves Leona. Uh, and we'll see how that works out for them. In the mid lane we already see a little bit of trades going back and forth there uh, as the first skirmishes break out here. Uh, Katarina of course opting to go with that boots first. Uh, to give herself a little extra mobility in dodging uh, those skill shots and let her uh, try and hang out uh, in that lane as uh, viably as she can here. Again, a little distracted here by these exchanges in the bottom lane. Um, but yeah, certainly that boots. Uh, she, she doesn't really have any mana, so the Doran's Ring not as good of a start. So uh, Pots 5, of course, or Boots 5, excuse me, gives you uh, the sustain of the 5... Uh, health pots but the mobility to avoid any damage that should be incoming as well and that will allow her to farm on up uh, past the traditional uh, amount and hopefully be able to get a good item break on her first uh, back there. So we do see of course the trades that came out in this bottom lane have put the solution pretty low but he's going to be able to chug up some health pots when needed here uh, and it looks like he's doing his best to try and put some uh, harassment down onto that graves as much as possible get him a bit closer in contention here though he is uh, going to opt to sit on that health pot, perhaps. Try and bait out a little over-aggression from this red side, but we'll see how that works out here, uh, whether or not they can do so. And it uh, looks like uh, that was uh, a very defensive play here. Again, taking that uh, dash second for the extra mobility, being able to dodge any engages in this bottom lane. And, uh, we do see the Zenith Blade, unfortunately, missing for that uh, Leona there. And some good shields coming out to... Block out some of that damage in the bottom lane. Make sure uh, that Lucian doesn't get too low as he is now without that health pot. Uh, as he did chug that last one. So uh, we'll see just how well he can manage after this wave gets largely reset here. It looks like uh, that will be Oriana trying to throw down the W for a little extra speed. But she doesn't get out of uh, the... Oh no, she, she both doesn't get out of the Scion uh, knock up there. 
but she also burns the flash a few inches just too far north of the wall there and is not able to flash over properly. So that is both the summoners gone on that Oriana and a very gankable lane now. Actually, speaking of ganks, as we turn our attention to the top lane, one more Twin Fangs will do it. The claw putting the distance there, not going to be enough. And now seeing the rest of their lanes outperforming them, this bot lane for the red side going to... Uh, extend here to try and uh, get some damage down onto the blue side bot lane and they will get an overall favorable exchange and now that Lucian is out of that mana he's gonna have uh, he's gonna be pressed very hard for being able to uh, uh, deal with any uh, follow-up aggression here and since this wave is pushing towards the red side they're gonna have to be very careful uh, in any upcoming exchanges here Grace a little out of position but able to dash right on back not too much of a problem there. Um, but most notably, again, uh, Katarina did get the first blood, so she does already uh, have upgraded boots for some extra magic penetration right now. Make sure uh, she is essentially, at this point, uh, doing true damage to that Oriana. I'm not sure exactly of what runes Oriana did opt to take, but I'm sure that's probably going to be a painful set here. And uh, Scion, not going to actually be able to land the uh, CC on Oriana this time. And Katarina getting a little gutsy there trying to throw down some harassment, but she won't be punished for it as Leona takes the ride on to Lucian here. But the shield will block out most of the follow-up damage from Graves here. So overall, a pretty even exchange, especially given how low uh, Lucian was on mana at the start of that. But uh, the zoning looks like it's going to start to come out in this bottom lane, threatening uh, Lucian every time he steps forward to try and last hit. Leona just walks right into the middle of their minion line here. Uh, and Lucian being punished very severely for having no man and not being able uh, to get those escapes out. And that's going to be a fast ultimate coming out from the Lissandra. But the turn from uh, Cassiopeia actually going to make that a fairly even trade. And here comes into the bottom lane trying to get one of their lanes ahead, the Sejuani. Uh, but unfortunately, again, not too much uh, mana on that Lucian. He's not able to use those uh, caster abilities that he's so well known for. And unfortunately, he's not able to make the most out of that gank here. But hopefully, that will alleviate some pressure in this bottom lane. But Katarina with her six. And Sejuani only at four. Going to make that be a pursuit. But there is the uh, Shinpo on over to that Sejuani. And that is simply too much damage to deal with at level four. And now, with the Ignite coming down as well, the heal might be enough to keep that Lucian alive. I believe it will be. And uh, Lucian's going to be able to back... Uh, safely here in this bottom lane. Uh, very close call there, but uh, should work out in the long run for him, uh, despite the fact that that, of course, will be both of his summers gone now. Uh, definitely better than giving up a kill into that bottom lane, uh, keeping that lane as even as possible, though, of course, uh, there is now easily a kill's worth of CS lead going over to the red side at this point, uh, as Graves is now almost 20 CS ahead of that uh, Lucian right now. So, uh, overall, uh, all the lanes seem to be leaning towards this red side right now. Each lane, of course, having that CS advantage, but uh, also for most of them, having that uh, advantage in kills as well uh, has created what is already an insanely early 2k lead uh, at this point in the game. Uh, sub 10 minutes is absolutely insane to see here. And we do see, uh, of course, that uh, tier now stacking up for the Cassiopeia in the top lane uh, to already have a uh, kill to her name is going to make her a uh, lot more smoother of a ride through that power trough as she goes for that tier and it looks like she is getting the blasting wand next so that could be a blasting wand um, that is going to go into a rod of ages uh, but it is just opting to start on the power side of that or that could just be overall a flex buy uh, and if she uh, it starts to go uh, a little bit more um, uh, lower there. Hold that thought, actually, because there's an exchange here in the bottom lane. Uh, Lucian is going to be taking quite low again, but he does, of course, have some health pots here to try and sustain through that. And it looks like, uh, with the help of that Janna, actually, another sh uh, shot from that Graves is going to put a lot of damage onto that Lucian, and all of a sudden he's out of health pots again after he just came back to lane here. And there's the Buckshot coming out of Graves. 
Uh, and with that, Leona gonna hop right in. The Graves gonna be able to get the last auto attack, but perhaps biting off a bit more than they can chew. No, perfectly juggled aggro there from that bottom lane, and that will be a double kill for Graves, unanswered by this blue side. The presence uh, in this bottom lane uh, is insane right now to have been able to create that much zoning without a kill. Now to have two kills onto that Graves, uh, putting him at such a distinct advantage, is going to make that bottom lane even more treacherous. Now, of course, we see that dragon being started off with that kill advantage, knowing that this isn't something that could be easily contested here. Uh, gonna largely uh, be able to take this without even worrying about a thing at, at this point. So, there will be the first dragon going over to the red side. As we start to see some more defensive wards already being brought out by the blue side, which is definitely what they need to do here. Um, they need to uh, sort of accept that they have uh, lost the early game and are going to struggle as they get into the mid game here. But they need to definitely uh, uh, continue to award uh, their jungle uh, defensively. So to make sure that this doesn't get any further out of hand than it is, of course. Uh, if they perhaps try to overextend into the blue side jungle here, uh, they might bite off a little bit more they can chew go a little bit deeper than they should and then all of a sudden we have a game that could easily be turned around by this blue side here and taken back under control uh, but right now it is going to be a rough start for this blue team as the red side is going to absolutely be able to bully all of these lanes here and to answer the earlier question it does look like it will be the, uh, the stalker's blade being picked up for that chilling spike from the Scion here uh, and with the Moby boots as well that is going to be one scary Scion uh, that is going to be able to stay on you and do quite a bit of damage of course he is going with the Juggernaut enchantment um, so we will see that Scion uh, getting very tanky but uh, into this mid game he's going to be quite the scary Scion and it looks like here's a good gank here it is uh, the CC is only landing onto that Leona and great flash ultimate there from the Janna, but all of a sudden that actually, no, the level is going to come for the Sejuani, but that won't be enough to save her as Graves gets the return double kill and is looking to make that a triple. He's actually going to hand that one over to the Scion, who actually does miss that, so he's going to flash and he misses that as well. Janna going to pull off the great escape here in the bottom lane. Graves getting a little too cocky there, thinking Janna was doomed running up into that river area didn't create enough pressure to make sure that she actually followed through with that and went all the way up the river and she was able to sneak back through that tri bush and will end up surviving that with her life so fantastic play by the Janna there denying a kill and at this point every kill denial is absolutely critical for this blue side as we again uh, see that was overall a two for one uh, which is far more favorable uh, than a uh, one for three would have been. Of course, in favor of the red side here. Um, a two for one at this point is certainly a trade that you would be willing to make if you are this blue side just to get that gold flowing into your team, which you uh, absolutely are going to need here. And Grace uh, going deep enough to contest this uh, already de very defensively placed pink ward. Going to press that advantage very strongly right now. And a good flash by uh, this Oriana, but unfortunately, that's not going to be enough to save her from the Leona. And the Shinpo way is going to be plenty, but she is uh, thrown down by that Lissandra ultimate. And <laughs> Style and Lucian actually going to miss that ultimate as well, but uh, that will overall be the kill. And Lissandra actually might not make it alive here. She's <laughs> running for her life's. And she's going to make it out of there in time before uh, that a uh, Scion can get to her. But a uh, very close call there with Sandra almost dying to the Scion passive. But that will be a uh, kill going over to the blue side here. Definitely, again, something they needed at this point. And replicating that is going to be uh, something that's a little tricky for them to do as that was a bit overextension there fighting in between the turrets uh, from this red side. But if they can continue to uh, bait out 
um, circumstances like that and continue to try and uh, keep their awards up so they know when things like that are about to occur and can capitalize on it as they just did. That is going to be the way this blue side gets back into this game. It looks like uh, in the top lane that was the Rod of Ages pickup after all for that uh, Cassiopeia. So she will be going for that full greed start here in the top lane. Uh, and this will be the peak of her power trough right now. So we'll see uh, what this Lissandra is able to do up here. Uh, and if there's any ganks that Sejuani can provide that will be successful. Certainly though with that two kill um, Katarina already though with that extra penetration of the haunting guys uh, is going to be something to be reckoned with right now. And of course Graves already with that Infinity Edge boots completed uh, is going to be able to really uh, lay down the pain to anybody we can catch out which with those boots with that extra mobility you should be able to do uh, all the more easily right now. Looks like they are going to be rotating around to this mid turn and it doesn't look like that'll be something they're able to defend here. Um, there's going to actually be the Wombo combo coming out from this blue side and that will get them a kill to start this off on the Cassiopeia but unfortunately now we're seeing the power of this team who is already so far ahead. Leona being a champ for her team tanking up those turret shots is going to end up going down so that overall is a 2 for 4 but that is the kind of power uh, that was uh, already present within this red side team uh, because they had such an advantage going into that fight and unfortunately uh, Lissandra does not have her teleport off cooldown so she was not able to come join that fight so that was a 4v5 uh, and when you're going to be able to fight 4v5 with that much of a lead that is just unfortunately how those fights are going to go every time. So. They will get a uh, vision of this dragon as it goes down, so they will know the timer for it. Uh, but that will be a second dragon of the game going over to this red side here. As it looks like they're going to also hand over uh, that uh, uh, blue buff to the Cassiopeia here. As she looks to use any excuse to stack up those tiers uh, a little bit quicker. <laughs> those blue side team tiers. Um, yeah, it looks like uh, the blue side trying to create a little bit of pressure here in this middle lane. There's only Leona uh, to defend here, aside from Cassiopeia, who just now shows up. Um, unfortunately, the blue side did not realize uh, that the entire red team, uh, aside from those two, were uh, out of position to defend that, so they were not able... Uh, to get there and try and press that, get some damage down onto that turret, and uh, now they're going to have to send Lissandra into the top lane here to try and excuse me, try and salvage what's left of the CS by the time she gets there. And not miss out on too much experience, and just the threat of a 502 Katarina uh, going towards the ward is enough to uh, scare off the tank Sejuani of the team. Definitely not a condition you want to see if you're the blue side here. And Leona, so free to roam deeply. I mean, there were four members right around there, but uh, Leona felt perfectly comfortable in that or in that jungle just roaming around. And there does come the teleport called for, thinking that Leona was going to go a bit harder, perhaps. Unfortunately, for the blue side, she did not. Leona does miss the Zenith Blade out of the bush there. But as we start to see the pink wards coming down ever further into the blue side territory, uh, these, I mean, this jungle is simply no longer the blue side's territory at this point. Uh, and you gotta wonder, what what can we do at this point? I mean, you're gonna need to see executed what was before one of those Wombo comes. And Oriana does have a ball in position. She gets a good ultimate on two members. Uh, though not necessarily the best, only one of them was a squishy member that she was aiming for. And that will be the Katarina going down for some shutdown gold on Lucian. Definitely needed here, but overall, that is a two for one. Again, not the worst exchange if you are this blue side. Two for ones, um, excuse me, one for twos for the blue side. Uh, it's not nearly going to be that big of a deal. Oh no, but the 
flash engage from uh, Leona. Very well played there. Uh, not much to be done about that, but that definitely hurts to see um, now because that is, of course, an extended three for one. And those are the trades that you simply cannot afford to make at this point. Two, one for twoing uh, is one thing because uh, you're, you're behind. You're trying to make up where you can. But if you're going to go one for three, uh, that's only going to worsen your situation. Uh, uh, one for two is arguable because that can start to get your team a little bit of the gold they preciously need to start building some of their items. But uh, as we see the red buff being denied here from Sejuani, uh, not even able to get there in time to smite it away from the graves. All these resources are being denied from the blue team and uh, the resources are definitely flowing over to this red side here. And as we uh, see that Rod of Ages, or excuse me, that needlessly large Rod completed now for this Cassiopeia, the Rod of Ages is almost stacked and that tier is getting ever closer to being stacked as well. So um, all of a sudden, Cassiopeia's uh, window that this blue side could take advantage of, uh, since it was so heavily covered by the insane amount of kill leads uh, that were provided to this red side, uh, of course the blue side just couldn't capitalize on it. It looks like that area of vulnerability is going to be closed on up, and once that's closed up, uh, Cassiopeia that has a fully stacked rod and tier is not going to be something you want to deal with. Uh, she's going to become an absolute nightmare for these teams. Uh, for the blue side, at least. <laughs> for their team. Especially since with the Sejuani, with the Lissandra, with the Orianna, uh, they're going to be generally facing the engagement as they look to try and get a favorable engagement uh, wherever they can. But in doing so, uh, they're going to open themselves up to a flash ultimate from that uh, Cassiopeia, which again, since that is a comfortable champion uh, for the top laner here for the red side, that's going to be something that we might be able to see executed with impunity. As we see uh, engagement looking to start out here, just a simple, there's the ultimate there, actually uh, does land on two of the squishier members, but is not uh, used for an engagement, is used just for some disengage, as we see the Scion trying to split push in the top lane right now. As the, bo uh, the bottom lane is just focused by these four members of the red side. I mean, uh, the, these four members definitely demand all five of the blue team here uh, for that respect to really defend this. But in doing so, that, as we see now, leaves this Scion to just take that top, alert for f top turret, I should say, for free. And that will be the fourth turret of the game going over to this blue s or to this red side. Only answered by one, and unfortunately, we did see the fail ward there for a moment. This red team looking to try and get a pick, but the blue side, knowing that they cannot risk going out without wards, are being very precautious, very uh, reserved right now in whether or not they're willing to jump out. In fact, they might need to just give up this dragon here, especially now that all five members are here. Sejuani might try and be a hero, but I would certainly not advise it. Lucian going to throw out the Choline just in case if Oriana pulled the trigger on that ultimate, but she did not see a good opportunity to do so. So that will just be the Lucian ultimate on cooldown uh, for this dragon here, and that's critically the third dragon of the game going over to this red side. And with that increased mobility, uh, you got to start to wonder what, what can we see coming out of this blue side to come back? I mean, I know I have already asked that question, um, but now I feel like the answer has to continue to change here and continue to be updated uh, because the situation is in fact worsening as time goes on uh, and the blue side needs to be continuing I mean to do uh, what we're seeing right now on our screen here of the uh, very studious sweeping defensively not going too far out to ward hunt uh, not going out to try and challenge those dragons when they know that they're in a position where uh, it would probably just result in a poor team fight and uh, still losing the dragon. And as we take a quick look of the vision, uh, it seems like the blue side is getting quite a bit of vision down within their own jungle uh, and is denying largely uh, the red side's vision creeping into their territory as well. So 
the vision wars uh, are being very hard fought here by this blue side and that is absolutely why the situation is not any worse than it is of course 515 is not something that you would say is a great situation uh, nearly uh, 9k behind right now but that is one that you're gonna have to deal with and you're gonna be able to survive in as we see the supposedly tanky uh, Sejuani getting absolutely ripped apart Sandra doing her best to try and defend those pink wards and just as we were talking about uh, the vision war being fought pretty evenly here comes the red side to assert their dominance and demand that this slain or excuse me that this uh, vision game go in their favor here and that is uh, notably as well uh, the Luden's echo picked up for Lissandra or excuse me uh, Cassiopeia to press that uh, advantage even further now uh, she will be uh, just another threat not going to follow the more traditional AP top laner that we've seen now where they focus on their cooldowns focus on their CD or excuse me obviously their CD but their CC um, and try and be a bit more utility focused for their team uh, it looks like they're just going to go for some raw damage it looks like uh, that Leona is a little caught out but with that uh, beautiful solar flare onto the two carries that will not be uh, any possible follow up from this blue team and they're going to be forced to uh, just back away here back to their turret as that Cassiopeia uh, is going to be able to shove out that top lane and again this is a situation that demands all of these members in the bottom lane and unfortunately they are not here to answer this call so without them I mean this being able to use that Colian on this mini wave will buy them a little bit of time here in the bottom lane but should a fight break out there's gonna be a very scrappy fight here in the bottom lane and I would be interested to see uh, who pulls the trigger first on that teleport ideally that would be uh, Lissandra throwing down the ultimate onto Cassiopeia to prevent her teleport and then teleporting herself to try and make this a 4v5 situation and delay uh, Cassiopeia from being able to react. Um, but the Grace, as we see, just in a disgusting amount of damage there from one ability thrown down onto people who are sitting on uh, underneath a turret that gives you extra defense as well. I mean, just painful to watch. As we see again, that like Katarina looming in the jungle looking for a pick not even really helping too much with the turret itself just waiting for an engagement there might be the engagement but that ultimate from uh oriana mostly just delays the issue rather than anything else but here comes katarina after finishing off that turret shimpo's in <clears throat> and is able to get just within the aoe of it just like that zenith blade which was barely in range but will do the trick and graves getting critted on still not enough so Sandra coming out of that Zonia's is gonna immediately go down the Graves ultimate for style points afterwards and now you have a red team all five members up in the base of this blue side that only have three members up right now Leona extending a little bit farther than she should gonna pay for it with her life but that will be the red turret getting taken down and Sion happy to tank that does not even lose his shield for doing so so while they did not get the inhibitor as well in this bottom lane, they did get that uh, inhibitor turret down, and that is a crack now in the base for this red side. Or excuse me, for this blue side in favor of the red side here. And Cassiopeia showing the burst of the burst of the Luden's Echo, a single combo of not even uh, necessarily the strongest damage abilities. Almost killing off that Sejuani, who was admittedly low, but uh, just walking around, stacking up that Luden's Echo uh, constantly uh, creates such pressure and such sudden burst that can come out of Cassiopeia that you actually got to be very respectful of her uh, ability to pop up, especially when she is going for that damage uh, version of Cassiopeia in this top lane. So we're going to see the red side pull this dragon out. Very good play here to get a little extra comfort, make this even harder for a Sejuani to try and come in and do some hero steal on. And that looks like that will be 
without even a chance to get in position to contest the fourth dragon of the game. All four going over to the red side here. And now there will be that constant threat from the red side saying, hey, if you don't come out here, if you don't fight us for this next dragon, we're going to have dragon five and you're going to be sorry. So all of a sudden, we see a situation uh, where this blue side is forced to react here without even necessarily having their base fully uh, compromised yet with losing one of those inhibitors. Just the threat of that inhibitor falling at any point is really making them posture defensively in this uh, southern side of the map right now. Where Graves is out right now with that minion wave is already dangerously close to that inhibitor for this blue side, especially as they group up ever further. They're looking on this Leona again, but that is not who you want to look on to as we see um, that, <laughs> that item taken down here. Uh, the ZZ Rot, yeah, portal um, <laughs> taken out here uh, was creating a little extra pressure. Good uh, noticing it and clearing that out immediately and actually getting the turret and she will be stopped and that will be a kill on the Sandra who teleported simply too soon there. And that will be an inhibitor for free. In fact, at the cost of uh, Lissandra going down uh, in this bottom side. And Graves almost able to get a kill on his own too. Does eventually go down when the rest of these teams get here. But that will be enough damage to uh, clean this on up. And the yes, the last Twin Fang gonna be enough to finish off that Oriana as well. So that is the full ace coming out in favor of this red side. And they might be able to just try and finish this off right now. It looks like they're going to try and do so that Alessandra is going to be up in five seconds because she did die sooner trying to make that teleport happen. Uh, and Leona is quite low right now. So it is effectively a, only three members that are up right now. And they are going to retreat after taking a single inhibitor turret, or excuse me, a single nexus turret and an inhibitor. But now all eyes are going to be shifting towards that Baron Pit with those super minions starting to stream in for the red side in the bottom lane. Uh, with that Nexus turret already down with the Nexus compromised even further now, uh, you you got to think that all the red side has to do at this point is dance around that Baron Pit, hang out, look for a pick, throw down some pink wards, sweep it out, make sure there's no wards from the blue side, and once they do so, sit and wait. If they come, kill them. If they don't, take the Baron. You know, they, they can only defend the base or defend the Baron. There's only two options at this point. And with the ever-looming threat of that Dragon 5, which is coming up, if they group for the Baron, they would be able to get that Baron and the Dragon 5 in sync with one another. And that is absolutely something that cannot be overcome in this game, uh, especially when you have uh, a 13k plus now uh, gold deficit for the blue side, as we see Graves wailing away at the turret, on the turret I should say, at this top side here. Gonna be able to take it unanswered as well. And we see another ZZ Route portal starting to stream in minions here into the top side. That is coming out um, from a bit far forward, but as they're looming around it might be more of a baiting situation here. And no, it looks like it's just going to be a distraction as they start off this dragon here. Or excuse me, this Baron. This is exactly what we're talking about. They have the vision thrown down. They have Katarina running interference. Katarina, definitely not somebody you want to run into uh, if you're coming for this. And that will be the Baron going down. The first one of the game going over to this red side. And critically, that is a minute 45 on the dragon. If the blue side can even manage to survive this push with these Baron up minions, while the super minions continue to stream into their bottom side. <laughs> their bottom lane, I should say. Um, this is going to be something that the red side can easily fall back to and very securely and safely take. Uh, that shouldn't be able at all to be contested. And that is the middle lane inhibitor going down. Looks like blue side 
doing everything again just to defend their wards outside of their own base and that is uh, absolutely painful to see right now as super minions streaming into both the middle and bottom side of their base and the barren up minions in the top this looks like this could possibly be the inhibitor falling on the top side as well. Blue side is going to make their last stand here, do everything they can to defend this. But again, as those super minions streaming into the base, there's not much that they can do. Lucian forced to throw down the falling. Most of it gets blocked off by Scion. That's a good ultimate uh, on top of the Sandra. Uh, but unfortunately, that is not enough. And that is still, despite those good ultimates that hit a lot of critical people, that is two, three people now going down for this blue side unanswered. And that most likely will spell the game with these now barrened up super minions here as this Nexus turret will be going down. That poor Janna doing all she can with her shield. Uh, the Oriana trying to poke out people. But that will be the Nexus going down. And that is the game going in favor of the red team. Google Ward Search. And this was a uh, vile mall division game by the way so this is a very strong message being sent by this google word search team uh trying to assert their dominance within the role and again but we've had some uh issues with the uh summary screen today so just in case we're still having that issue let's uh also remain on this scene for screen for the majority of the view lucian did do quite a bit despite how poorly this game went overall he did show up somewhat strongly here but uh, the real story of the game is that Seraph's Rod, Cassiopeia, who even went Echo, uh, and is able uh, to easily, without concern, make it past that power trough and become an absolute nightmare of a 6-1-3 and three, and hit that late game stride and be unanswerable. Um, in addition to, speaking of being unanswerable, that 10-1-8 Katarina uh, didn't even build the Luden's Echo this game, which was uh, the whole shift in the meta recently that's introduced Katarina again. Uh, she rather went with just some more flat penetration stats here. A little, excuse me, a little bit of MR to deal with that Lissandra, to deal with that Oriana who could try and stop her, uh, but at the same time and then doing so would shred their own MR and make them a lot more vulnerable to her. And that is how you saw her able to spiral out of control, especially once she got the Zonius to just never die again. And I was very excited to see in this game the purchase of that ZZ Rot portal to try and create a little bit more pressure in some of the lanes. It does not seem like it was super effective this game uh, for that Leona to pick up. But it, it did create some pressure uh, in some of the lanes and did distract uh, the blue side from that Baron that was happening. Uh, which, you know, I mean, they probably wouldn't have been able to contest anyway, but it was used and I'm looking forward to seeing... Uh, more of these items picked up here, uh, perhaps in coordination with more than one person on the team, perhaps picked up by a jungler as well to try and really create a split pushing pressure threat uh, without even needing to send a fifth person to split push a lane. So I'm very interested uh, in seeing how that item goes on. Let's see if we can get the final stats up for this uh, game here. No, we do have the error screen yet again. I apologize for that, but... Regardless, that is the game. Thank you all for tuning in again. That game was won by Google Ward Search. Um, certainly lived up to their name today. And we're searching out those wards quite a bit to assert their uh, vision dominance in the game. So yeah, if you enjoyed this game, please feel free to stay tuned uh, to my channel. I will be uploading videos uh, of these games after they are cast live on this channel. I will be uploading the video captures of them. Every day after the match completes, they typically take about two hours to load, but you can always stay tuned to AfterHoursGaming.tv to see all of the videos uploaded by all of our lovely casters for the league there, as well as keep tabs with what the schedule is and see what upcoming matches you are interested in finding. And I thank you for watching uh, today, and a big shout out to the live streamers again. Thank you all for watching, and I will see you guys next week.